The Gulf Stream, of course, will mean much more than merely turning Greenland into a tropical paradise. It will also mean turning most of the Northern Hemisphere into an icebox. Indeed it will, Doctor. Can't you see it? Blizzards in New York, in Paris, in London, in the middle of July. And I can assure you that Thrushland will take full advantage of the chaos that would follow. Forgive me, Doctor, we're forever being interrupted. It is hard to believe that at this date and time there are still people who are not educated to the concept and applications of what is known as geoengineering by means of chemtrails for example or more advanced methods as manipulating entire weather systems like hurricanes right down to producing earthquakes. On August 25, 2017 an exceptionally devastating hurricane by the name of Harvey hit Houston, Texas and it didn't take long for those familiar with the concept of weather manipulation to speak out. I get real suspicious when I see hurricanes. And gee, why would people want there to be some kind of disaster? We always want disaster. Wall Street benefits from disaster. What else could they benefit from millions of desperate and panicked people? Why would the weather be gamed and unleashed upon populations under siege? You tell me. Buying things and land that isn't for sale, clearing out old parts of town with unwanted populations and running them out of town, insurance money, agency funding and budget increases, who knows? But don't pretend that there isn't big business and disaster. Two weeks later, right on the heels of this catastrophic hurricane, an earthquake hit Mexico, which had very peculiar green lightning preceded, the likes which had never been witnessed before. Normally no lightning of any kind is linked to earthquakes. Earthquakes we're going to find very simply can be created, can be inspired so to speak. You direct some Tesla energy right to some tectonic plate and I guarantee you're gonna get that thing going. Now we will have a look at the oldest available film footage of what has become the chemtrail insanity of today. What you're about to see dates back to the year 1921. And even if this chemtrail was not intended for weather manipulation, it shows that already in 1921, way before World War II, it wouldn't have been a delusion or fantasy to speak of chemtrails, meaning the application of particles utilizing airplanes.
We will now examine a film from 1944. And this authentic World War II footage presents us with a rare opportunity to witness chemtrails being released by aircrafts of the U.S. Air Force during an actual mission. To the men in the ships, they are far from beautiful, for they point like beckoning fingers to the formation, signposts in the sky for the enemy to spot us. Is this in fact a regular contrail development? Let's have a closer look at this short sequence. We believe to see the four motors exhaust trails which are condensing behind the airplane. An exact analysis shows though that the four supposed exhaust trails don't exit at the position of the engines, but exactly between them. A comparison with another B-17 from a different vantage point confirms this unusual circumstance and consequently leads to the question of what substance the supposed condensation trail behind this bomber consists. Another indication, the sudden break in the contrail is contrary to expectations evident in this 1944 footage. This rare capture shows how the spray process by the plane on the right suddenly stops. Seconds later, the contrail appearance stops on the plane in the center, while the B-17 on the left has no contrail at all. In this sequence from 1944, it becomes evident that the propeller planes flying at 7 km altitude are not able to generate any contrails, except if previously installed spray systems are activated and deactivated. In a 1945 film documentary during an air battle between American B-17 bombers and German fighter planes, the same phenomenon repeats itself. Here as well, the commentator mentions the impressive contrails after the fighter planes reach their altitude of almost 8 kilometers. In the distance, the enemy planes are already visible and their exhaust trails are relatively short at this point. The massive contrails that were generated by the B-17s upon reaching the scene have now inexplicably vanished. At the same time, a massive contrail development appears on the enemy aircrafts. From a military and strategic viewpoint, this is complete nonsense, as it makes the enemy planes perfectly visible to be shot down. Astonishingly, all massive contrails of the hostile aircrafts vanish during the ensuing battle. Where did all the just seconds ago visible contrails go? All planes are still in the same area and altitude and none of the planes flies with a switched off engine. Let's hear what the narrator has to say. Because you know that enemy fighters will appear any minute. They know exactly where you are. They've been watching the stratosphere condense off your wingtips, giving you away in long trails of magnificent treachery. The narrator, a controlled military speaker, says that this massive trail we see here is a wingtip vortex, which in my opinion is false. Here we see authentic wingtip condensation on a modern jet fighter. An analysis of both films leads to the conclusion that these are combinations of early chemtrail experiments and ordinary air battles. These so-called historical documentations are media sleepers which are presented in actual chemtrail discussions as hard evidence against conspiracy theories. At a close look, however, they are easily exposed as disinformation. Chemtrail spraying did not just start in the 1990s, but has been done since the Second World War. 
all CO2 slash climate change discussions have always been diversionary tactics for the real reasons of temperature change. During the Second World War, massive spraying was carried out by the Allied bomber squadrons, which can be seen in these archive pictures. And the insanity continues. I'd like to close here by showing how far this insane activity has come by presenting two very rare high altitude photos. First, the skies of Germany showing massive chemtrail, and second, a horrifying image of the entire southeast of the United States of America being literally polluted to the maximum by chemtrails.